Shalom. Welcome back. Let's get back into the word of God. Praise the Lord. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, all the way down to verse 20, 20, 21. 1 John chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. You got your Bibles? All right, let's begin. Verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begotteth loveth him also that is begotten of him. All right, John, the apostle John, is a disciple of Jesus Christ. He's a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham. This epistle is addressed to all the 12 tribes of Israel that believe the gospel of the kingdom, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. So when you're reading and studying the scriptures, you have to keep the scriptures in context. If you don't, you're going to misinterpret the scriptures. So that's why I have to say it the way I say it, because the scriptures are written for, to, and about Israel. They're not written for, to, and about everybody else in the whole wide world. But your 501c3 corporations, the pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system, they don't tell you that. And so they take the scriptures out of context and try to apply it to everybody. That's how you get Christianity and Catholicism and all these other religions and Islam and all this other stuff, but specifically uh, Christianity because people believe that Jesus came to start a religion called Christianity, but Jesus didn't come to start a religion called Christianity. He came to save his people from their sin. You got to keep the Old Testament and the New Testament uh, together because they work hand in hand. You can't have one without the other, but that's what people do. They try to uh, go to the New Testament and then just forget about the Old Testament and they take the scriptures out of context. The same way the Lord, the Father, God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is in the Old Testament, the same way he is in the New Testament. <laughs> Jesus was in the Old Testament. Jesus is in the New Testament. He come to save his people from their sin. That's what the scripture says. So go back to verse one. It says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ. All right. Whosoever. Your 501c3 corporations want to tell you whosoever is everybody in the whole wide world. The scriptures are not addressed to who everybody in the whole wide world. It's addressed to Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. So whosoever of the seed of Abraham, that is a Hebrew Israelite, that believe that Jesus is the Christ, Christ is Messiah, the Messiah and Savior of Israel is born of God, God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who God is. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of Israel. Jesus was born the king of the Jews. That's why he was born, to save his people from their sins. So whosoever of Israel believe that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him, that begot, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. It's Still talking about Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham that believed the gospel of the kingdom. Verse 2, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. All right. Verse 2, it says, by this we know. Who's we? Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, all 12 tribes that believe the gospel of the kingdom. 
By this we know that we love the children of God. Who are the children of God? Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. <laughs> All 12 tribes. That's who the Lord God chose. He chose Israel to be his people. When we love God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Israel, and keep his commandments. Who was the commandments given to? It was given to Israel when they were in the wilderness, when the Lord delivered us out of Egypt and brought us through the Red Sea. I'm saying us because that's who we are. The people that came over on those transatlantic slave trades are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. That's who we are. Don't let nobody tell you any different. <laughs> I know that may be hard for some of you to accept and believe, but that's what the scripture says, that we would be led away captive into all nations. Just believe what the word says. Who was led away captive? Us. <laughs> it applies to us. That's who we are. Another scripture said that you would go into Egypt again in ships. Who was brought to a country in ships, slave ships? Us. That's who we are. We are the uh, southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. But we have to believe the gospel of the kingdom. We are the children of God. But this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. The, ke the commandments was given to Israel. All ten commandments, they still relevant. You can't just say, okay, I just do this one and then I'll do everything. If you're guilty of one, you're guilty of all the commandments. <laughs> that means keeping the Sabbath, <laughs> which is the seventh day. The Sabbath is the seventh day. Y'all, Your 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers don't even uh, mention the Sabbath like it don't exist. It exists. It's one of the commandments. You got to keep it. Verse 3, but this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That's the love of God. If you don't keep the commandments, then you don't love God. You don't love the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. Well, this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So keeping the commandments, that's keeping the Sabbath. What I mean by keeping the Sabbath? The, the scripture said, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. The scriptures also said, remember the Sabbath. This is when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. So that's why we should remember the Sabbath. Because the Lord passed over us. He killed the firstborn in Egypt. but So he told us to keep the Sabbath for the Passover. Because he passed over us. Verse 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So whatever is born of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. So that's who he's the God of. So Israel is his people. So if we're born of God, then we overcome the world. What is the world? The world simply is the unbelieving. It's specifically, it's Israel that don't believe. <laughs> you're, you're, you're called the world. You're a tear because you don't believe the gospel of the kingdom. And unbelievers will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is for Israel. Our name has been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. But if you don't believe, then your name will be blotted out of the book of life. So the, the, when Jesus comes back, he's going to be governor, the ruler of the whole earth, everybody in the earth. And so Israel is scattered right now to the four winds, all 12 tribes. But Judah is scattered everywhere. And so the people over in the land called the nation of Israel, they are not God's chosen people. They're Ashkenaz, Khazarians, Japheth, Gentiles, and Edomites who have taken over the land by fraud and deceit. They say that they are Jews, but they do lie. 
That's what the scripture says about them. All of Israel is scattered. Well, the earth belongs to the Lord, but God's people are scattered in the earth everywhere. That's why when the Lord said to Abraham that through you all the nations of the earth will be blessed, we're scattered into all the nations. But the nation that God chose is the nation of Israel, all 12 tribes, but we're divided into two kingdoms. This is stuff that, that you have to know and understand when you're studying the scripture. But you have to believe the gospel of the kingdom, the word of God. For whatsoever is born of God overcoming the world. Because this world is going to be destroyed. And if you haven't overcome the world, you're going to be destroyed with it. So you have to believe the gospel of the kingdom. You have to obey the word of God. You have to be a disciple. So anyone that's Israel that don't believe the word of God, they have not overcome the world. They're going to be destroyed with the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. That's what separates Israel from Israel. <laughs> There's the Israel, still all of the 12 tribes, two kingdoms. There's the ones that believe and the ones that don't believe. And so it's our faith. That's how we overcome the world, by believing that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. That's how we overcome the world. That's how we make it into the kingdom of heaven. But not just saying we believe, but obey the word of God and do what it says to do. Verse 5, who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. So he's making it plain. If you're a Hebrew Israelite, these, you're the one that overcometh the world if you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God. And that's what he's talking about. Jesus is sent from God. He's the Messiah. He's the Savior of Israel. Israel was under sin. And the Lord sent Jesus to, to be the perpetuation for our sins, to pay for our sins, to redeem us from the law of sin and death, to redeem Israel, all those that were under the law. No one else is under the law but Israel. And so that's why the scriptures is only for Israel. It's not for everybody else. Verse 6, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, but not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is true. So Jesus was made flesh. He dwelt among us. He was born of a virgin. Same way everybody else is born into the world. Jesus was born into the world, but of the Holy Spirit, he said, of blood and water, and by the Spirit. And it is the Spirit that bears witness because the Spirit is true. So that's how Jesus was born into the world. The, the God breathed, hovered over Mary. Mary became pregnant. And Jesus was born into the world. Same way everybody else was born. But Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. That's why he was born to take away the sins of the world. The, when he says take away the sins of the world, it's talking about Israel because the world belongs to us. It doesn't belong to everybody else. The whole world belongs to Israel. To be, we're God's chosen people. So he's given us the earth. The earth belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's king of all the earth. <laughs> Jesus said we're going to rule and reign with him. Verse 7, for there is there, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father and the Word and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. So the record is in heaven. <laughs> God is not a man that he should lie. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's not a man that he should lie. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father. 
God is the father, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the word. Jesus is the word. He was in the beginning. Before the earth was, Jesus was in, in, in the Garden of Eden and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. They bear the record in heaven. Verse 8, and there, there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. So the record is in heaven and the record is on earth. That's why Jesus said when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. It's all about the kingdom of heaven coming on earth. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God has a will. In the same way his will is in heaven, is the same way his will is on the earth. It doesn't change. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven is for Israel. Israel is the church. Israel is the body of Christ. All that believe the gospel of the kingdom by faith. Verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. But this is the witness of God which he had testified of his son. So the witness, the one that's on earth and the one is in heaven, the witness of God is greater. Because <laughs> it says, but this is the witness of God which he had testified of his son. God testified, yeah, this is my son. <laughs> it came from heaven. He spoke the word. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who God is. That's You have to acknowledge the Lord by who he is. Because if you don't, you will take him out of context and you think he, okay, God for everybody. But he chose a certain people. He didn't choose everybody. Even when 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 Jacob and, and Esau was in Rebekah's womb, he chose Jacob. He didn't choose Esau. God makes a distinction of who he chooses. And people don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. He didn't choose everybody. He chose one person. He chose Abraham and his seed after him. That's who the, the covenant and the promises are to. It's to Israel. It's not to everybody else. And so other people in the world, the 501c3 corporation, y'all don't tell the people this or they don't know, but you have to acknowledge who God is. You have to acknowledge the God of Israel, but people don't do that. They just want to say God. They, they just want to say Jesus, but they don't want to acknowledge who Jesus is. Jesus is the Savior of Israel. The reason I bring this point up is to help you understand. When you, when you see that the Lord was bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt and destroying all the countries that were before them to give them the land, they came into Jericho. Jericho was shut down, shut up. Nobody got in or out. And the spies went in. They saw Rahab and they went in to where she was. And she said, we heard about y'all, the God of Israel. And we're, we're afraid for our lives. But Rahab, she showed them kindness. And they remembered her. She said, when you come to destroy the city, remember me. Remember the kindness that I've showed unto you. So she was spared in all her family because she acknowledged the God of Israel, God's chosen people. That's what people don't want to do today. They don't want to acknowledge who God is. That's what's wrong with Christianity. They just want to say it's for everybody. Christianity does not, does not acknowledge the God of Israel. That's why they try to make a distinct, distinction between Christianity and Israel. Oh, it, People want to say the church, the Christians are the church. They don't want to say Israel is the church. Israel is the church. Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He didn't come to start Christianity. Christianity is not the church. Israel is the church. Israel is the body of Christ. The scripture said it, the church was in the wilderness. Jesus is the head of the church. He was in the wilderness with Israel. <laughs> The church is Israel. It's always been and always will be. 
That's who the bride of Christ, that's who he's coming back for, Israel. That's who he came for, Israel. That's who he died for, Israel. That's who he's coming back for, Israel, that believed the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus himself is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah. You have to understand this. If you don't, you're going to be deceived. And a lot of people are deceived with Christianity because they believe that Jesus came to start a religion. Jesus didn't come to start a religion. Jesus came to save his people from their sin. That's why he came. Okay, where are we at? Verse, uh, verse, verse 10. Verse 10. With that, he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath... He that believeth not, God has made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. All right. Still talking to for and about Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, both kingdoms, the northern kingdom of ten tribes, the southern kingdom of two tribes, Judah and Benjamin called Jews. The northern kingdom was called Israel or Ephraim, but when they sinned before the Lord, the Lord scattered them among the Gentiles. They were no longer referred to as Israel or Ephraim. They were referred to as Gentiles or Greeks or whatever location where they were scattered. And so people don't understand that. They see Jews and they think Jews is all of Israel. Jews is just two, king, two tribes, the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. That's Jews. The rest of the 10 tribes are not Jews. They are Israel, but they're not referred to as Israel anymore. They're referred to as Gentiles. So when you see that, Jews and Greeks, they're still talking about the 12 tribes. When you see Jews and Gentiles, they're still talking about the 12 tribes. Verse 10 again, he that believeth on the Son of God, meaning a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham, all 12 tribes, if you believe on the Son of God, Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of Israel, the Son of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that the witness he in him had the witness in himself. If you believe that, the witness is in, in you. That means you're born of the Spirit. He that believeth not, God has made him a liar. So if you don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, if you're a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham, you don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. You are a liar. The scripture says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. You're not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You're going to be tossed into the lake of fire because he has, he believed it not the record that God gave of his son. And so that's the part of Israel that don't believe. So that's what Christianity want to say. They want to say all of Israel don't believe. You know, all of Israel have forsaken the Lord. Christianity is wrong. It's not a God, Jesus didn't come to start that religion. That's why Jesus said, Many are going to come in my name. Christianity is a form of the name of Christ. He said, They're going to deceive many. That's why many are de deceived because they believe that Jesus came to start a religion called Christianity to save everybody. Christianity wants to say, Oh, Israel. They turn their back on God and they don't serve the Lord. That's not true. Some believe and some don't. Not all of Israel, but they don't know who Israel is. And I blame your 501c3 corporation because they don't tell the people who Israel is. Israel is scattered to the four winds. And we're black. We're people of color. We're everywhere in the world. Verse 11. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his son. So this is the record that God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that God has given to us eternal life. That's what the Lord promised, eternal life through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel, and this life is in his son. <laughs> it's in Jesus. That's why we have to believe. That's why Jesus came to die for our sins, the sins of Israel, to redeem us back to God. God has not forsaken his people. 
<laughs> That's all he knows is Israel. He don't know everybody else. But y'all have to acknowledge who God is. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of Israel. And you have to acknowledge who Jesus is. Jesus is the Savior of Israel. Verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. John is making it as plain as it can be. <laughs> if you're a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham, and you believe the gospel of the kingdom, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, you have life. And if you don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, then you don't have life. Your name is blotted out of the book of life. You're going to go into the lake of fire. But if you believe, you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Your name is written in the book of life. Verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So John is saying, this is why I have written unto you. He, have, he wrote this unto the 12 tribes of Israel, to both kingdoms. But this, these things have I written unto you that believe, the ones that believe the gospel of the kingdom, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior of Israel, that ye may know that you have eternal life. Just by believing that Jesus is the Messiah, we have eternal life. He's the Savior of Israel. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God, which is Jesus, the Savior of Israel. There is no other name given among men whereby we may be saved other than the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. God, Jesus is God's son. He sent his son to Israel. When, he, when the Lord was talking to Nicodemus and Jesus said, for God so loved the world, he was talking about Israel. Now, I know a lot of y'all don't want to receive it and accept it, but that's exactly who he's talking about. The scriptures are only for Israel. It's not talking about everybody else. Though they say world, they knew who they were talking about. Everybody else that take the scriptures out of context, try to make the scripture apply to them. The scriptures are not written to everybody else. It's only written to Israel. <laughs> no, it's for everybody. No, it's not. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Again. Talking about Israel. This is the confidence that we have in him. Israel, the ones that believe, all 12 tribes that believe the gospel of the kingdom, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. We have this confidence that if we ask anything of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of Israel, according to his will, what is his will? People want to act like God's will is a mystery. It's not a mystery. It's his word. Of the, his will is his word. He gave us the word, so that's his will. <laughs> so everything pertaining to the kingdom of heaven, that's his will. It's not pertaining to this life. It's pertaining to the kingdom of heaven. He hear it that. That's, that's what you have to understand. People want to think this life is about, about them or about us. This life is not about us. It's not about getting your needs met and all this humanity, humanism stuff that the 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system preach. That's what they preach. They don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. But that's the gospel of the kingdom is for Israel. That's, that's what we're supposed to be preaching and teaching. That's God's will for us. Jesus said that we have to deny ourselves to follow him, to be his disciple. We have to deny ourselves. So it's not about us. His will is about his word. It's about the kingdom of heaven. Verse 15. 
And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. So that's how we have to pray. We have to pray that the Lord's will be done on earth as it is in heaven, because that's the kingdom of heaven. And if it's going to be done, if we believe, it says, if we know that he hear us, you're serving the Lord. You believe in the gospel of the kingdom, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. The petition pertains to the kingdom of heaven. That's, that's what our life is about here on this earth. We're make, trying to make it to the kingdom of heaven. We're not trying to live here forever, be here forever. <laughs> People want to put down stakes and think you're going to be here. For, you're not going to be here forever. So quit worrying about today and tomorrow and all this. Jesus said, don't worry about that stuff. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. That's what he said. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and everything else will be added. So that's God's will for you, seeking the kingdom of heaven. It's not about anything else. Verse 16, if any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that, they shall, that he shall pray for it. So, you're Hebrew Israelite and you believe the gospel of the kingdom and you see a brother in the Lord who is also a Hebrew Israelite of the of the seed of Abraham that believed the gospel of the kingdom and he sinned. He falls short of the uh, grace of God, do something disobedient to the word of God, which sin is not unto death. He shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. So he said, you can pray and the Lord will forgive that person. And then he says, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that you should pray for it. The sin that's unto death is blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. You're calling the, the, what is of the Holy Ghost of the devil. That's blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. Don't pray for that because they won't be forgiven. Jesus said everybody will be forgiven of everything in this earth except blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. You can't call what is of God, what is of the Holy Spirit, of the devil. Verse 17, all unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. So he's letting us know all unrighteousness. What is unrighteousness? Unrighteousness is disobedience to the word of God. That's what unrighteousness is. If you disobey the word of God, that's sin. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. That's why Jesus came to forgive us. The commandments is righteous. But we're unrighteous. We're as filthy rags. There is nothing good in our flesh. But we strive every day to serve the Lord. That's why the Lord has given us his grace. His grace is sufficient for us. You fall, repent, get back up and serve the Lord again. Don't, don't stay in the mud in the mire. <laughs> get back up, repent. Verse 18, we know that whatsoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. So, Everyone that is born of God, that's born of the Spirit of God, that's a Hebrew Israelite, that believe the gospel of the kingdom, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel, we're born of God the Father. We're born of God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. We don't sin. We sin not. Our sins are covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wipes the slate clean. It's from the foundation of the world. Our name is written in the book of life. When we believe that, it, 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 God looks on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, looks on the blood of Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. That's why Jesus died. He is the Lamb, the Lamb of God that died for our sins. He, just like the Lord uh, passed over us, in the uh, we had to 
kill a lamb in Egypt and put on the doorposts and the lentils for him to pass over us. The same way with Jesus. Jesus is that, that lamb that was shed for our sins to pass over us because when the Lord comes back, it ain't going to be any mercy. <laughs> so the, our sins are covered. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. God keep us through his grace and mercy. And that wicked one touches him not. The devil can't don't have anything over us because greater is he, are we than he that is in the world. The Lord watches over us and he's not going to let the devil take any of us out and do stupid stuff. <clears throat> We're going to continue to serve the Lord. He's going to watch over us. That's why Jesus said, uh, when you pray, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. Deliver us from the hand of the devil. The devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But we have to continue in the word and in prayer daily, being instant in prayer. Always going about serving the Lord, not worrying about what's happening today or tomorrow. Not even fearing for our life. <clears throat> That's what people don't understand. Your life is hid in Christ. Don't worry about this life. Don't worry about it. No matter what situation you're in, this life is nothing compared to the kingdom of heaven. Verse 19, and we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. So, uh, Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham that believe the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God. And God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. The world is the world of unbelievers that don't believe and accept Jesus as the Messiah, who are Hebrew Israelites, the ones of Israel that don't believe. And see, what you got to understand, the scriptures are about for it too, and it is for Israel. <laughs> when you talk about the world, most of the time, they're not talking about everybody else in the whole wide world. It, it's, it, it's talking about Israel that don't believe. He crowned them as unbelievers. They're the world. And the whole world lies in wickedness. You got to understand, when the Lord comes back, he's coming back for Israel that believes. The scripture said, Jesus said, when he comes back, will he find faith in the earth? The same, Jesus said, the same way it was in the day of Noah, the same way it's going to be when he comes back. The same way it was in Sodom and Gomorrah, the same way it's going to be when he comes back. He's only coming back for Israel that believe. Everybody else is going to be damned. They're going to be destroyed. That's all he's coming back for. Now, everybody that's not Israel, I already told you. If you acknowledge who, who God is, God is the God of Israel. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. You have to acknowledge who God is and who Jesus is and who God's chosen people are. But most of y'all don't want to do that, <laughs> especially the Japheth Gentiles, because y'all are part of the Antichrist church system. But that's who God's people are. We're Israel. We're scattered to the four winds. And the whole world lies in wickedness. They, they don't want to believe. They don't want to acknowledge who God is. That God is the God of Israel. They want to say they believe in God. But they don't want to acknowledge him as the God of Israel. They want to say they believe in Jesus. But they don't want to acknowledge Jesus as the Savior of Israel. <laughs> So they're in wickedness because that's who God is. That's who Jesus is. Verse 20. And we know that the son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Even in his son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. So again, John is saying, and we know. Who's we? Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham that believe the gospel of the kingdom, that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. That Jesus, that, that 
we know that the son of God has come. That's why Jesus came to save Israel, his people from their sin and had given us an understanding. This is the understanding that God is the God of Israel. He's not the God of everybody else in the whole wide world. He's the Holy One of Israel. Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. This is the understanding that we may know him that is true. This is the truth. This is the gospel of the kingdom. And we are in him that is true. If you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior of Israel, you're in him. Even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. The God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and eternal life. That's who God is. Verse 21, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. So who's the little children? Israel, all 12 tribes that believe the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. Keep yourselves from idols. Don't be going around having these crosses and having no crucifix around your neck. That's idol, idol worship. Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He didn't come to start Christianity. All right. Another thing for all you people that buy these, you call them dolls. That's that's short for idols. The idols, idols. The dolls that you that you give your little girls to play with, dolls, that's short for idol. Idols. That's what it is. It's an idol. I'm just letting you know what the truth is. And so everything, all these different things that you put before the Lord is an idol. Idol worship. Anything that you put before God is idol worship. They even got the uh, these TV shows, idols. And people want to say, oh, that's my idol. Anything you put before God is idol. Keep yourselves from idol. If you're a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham, and you believe the gospel of the kingdom, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.